Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. And just so you know, I am in that location that used to have bookshelves behind me. So don't fear your computer is clean. It's well, just these dots on my wall. Okay. I was going to say, were you in a shooting? <laughs> like, what's happening? Yeah, oh, the... <laughs> well, wait for some of the comments and maybe... <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. Okay, we're headed in an inappropriate way. They, look, okay. they just look like bullet holes behind you. I don't know. Like, this was... Are you in an yeah. inner city of opera? That's what I would like to know. This is That's right. This is where I stay when I'm singing in Philly. And so I've been singing here this week. So this is just behind me. This is the only like white wall in the space. Yeah. And it just happens to have some, you know, holes yeah. in it. Okay. <laughs> well, now I feel like we need to give love to our California viewers because Jonathan, the whole state is on fire. The guy who, um, so someone, uh, Tim Sarin is this graphic designer, and he's helping us with the TSL website. And his it looks good what you've shown me. Hold well, his okay. town has had a fire and a shooting in it in the same week. Like what's going on in California is outrageous. So sending lots of love to our California yeah. Yeah. viewers. You know, like I mean, is Raphael okay? That's what we need to know. I don't really know. I was like, I'm very confused. Like there are three fires and it gets like very confusing. And Maybe he should have flown to Hiroshima. It's Why wasn't yeah. he there? I wasn't sure about that. So um, maybe he was, maybe he's part of a volunteer fire department. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and before okay. we get started, just some housekeeping. So I've tried to add everyone that emailed me to be on the mailing list. I couldn't respond to everyone on Instagram because I would lose my spot on where <laughs> it was and who I had gotten. And it was like too confusing. So um, if I didn't send you a personal message, I'm sorry, I did add you. Um, and the same thing with Twitter, Facebook, um, email is really the best way uh, to get added to the list. It's the easiest. I have your name. It goes in there. It's all bada bing bada boom um, and I'll try to send about a, an email about a once a week when we ha do new interviews and maybe if we do a live show or anything uh, for the holidays I'll you know send out an extra but I'm not going to spam anyone's uh, message box but I'm trying to I'll write fun things we'll have I'm we'll, gonna make Jonathan do fun music things we'll, we'll make it fun yeah it'll so, be a whole to do it'll be a whole <laughs> you know, little thing. Um, and if you want to help us out, uh, if you're doing your, any of your holiday shopping on Amazon, if you would be so kind to click our link before you do it, it sends a small percentage uh, to content creators. And um, as well as if you would like any uh, Tessa and Scott mugs that Liam Cross has designed or any of that, you can go to the link also in the comments. And if you do uh, take a picture of yourself with it, we'll put it on the show. Um, so oh, we can, fun. I like that. Yeah, yeah we made okay. like a pillow and I was like, yes, if your dog wants to have sweet Tessa and Scott dreams and you'd like to have him on the pillow, we'll put it on the show. We'll see Sparky and... Dave, Dave, I want a mug with your lunch from your adult nationals program. Oh, Liam, could, <laughs> could Liam do it? I don't know. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I've been thinking of skating again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, you know. Well, a fun weekend like this one could inspire someone to do so. I want to skate to the storm and maybe gloves. I'll think about it, you know. With one jeweled, a la, a la June. <laughs> okay. But in uh, just before we get started, Guillaume Cizeron, we were so ready to see their new programs that it seems like he has a mild back injury, but it didn't seem super severe. It seems like they were just being precautionary and he'll be back within two weeks. So I don't know. He posted something on Instagram, but it was like a black message. And I was like, uh oh, you know, like it was. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> grief. Yeah, yeah. grief. Yeah. Okay. And, but <laughs> hopefully he is okay. I mean, Marie France had a ton of teams here and a fabulous rose, like pink blush, rose colored jacket and the kiss and cry. So maybe that's what this is an homage to, Dave. Our, yes. Our red hues. Our red you hues. You have to respond to that color. Yeah. Okay. I thought she looked wonderful and she really enjoys to winning, I feel. So. <laughs> you know, I can't blame her. <laughs> yes. I feel like more than most though, you can tell when she enjoys winning because her, like, her jaw comes out and she's like, yes. And I'm like, you just got to watch the protruding jaw when, um, when okay. they win. That's but how you know it's real. Okay. Let's start with the pair event because it was quite um, the event. First of all, in the Alexa and Chris coaching situation and the USFS, what's very strange to me is that the USFS doesn't announce any of their coaching changes. So we knew that they were with Mito and Sand, but right. it wasn't ever fully announced and then until they just skate out and it listed Todd Sand and Jenny Mino as their coaches. Um, I guess this is a thing now. Yeah, yeah. It seems very strange that 
they seem disorganized about what to do right now it seems, uh, publicly. I but mean, apparently they moved like completely, like whatever they have, they must have just kept like a couple of boxes and storage and their suitcases and they're now in California and they have their stuff and they're ready to go. So, I mean, look, that's probably a pretty stressful situation moving mid season. You're in Germany, you're in Chicago, you're in Colorado. Now they're in California. So I'm sure they're being helped out, but that was interesting that they didn't announce it or the USFS yeah, didn't I, spin it or anything. It was it's strange. It's one of those things that like, you're actually glad in a very cheesy way, try not to like vomit that they have each other as the constant, because in a world where programs seem to be constantly changing, not maybe in overall... Constantly but like, changing. In a world. Isn't there a song, Jonathan? Like, yeah. I think there is now, Dave. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> but just like constantly changing entrances and choreographic mm -hmm. elements and transitions, and now you're changing cities, and now you're changing coaches, and now you're changing directives, and... I think it could be a very chaotic and turbulent time. Mm -hmm. Some people really thrive on that kind of chaos. Um, I certainly am not one of them, and it, it may appear that Alexa is not one of them either. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't think that Alexa has landed a triple sow cow that I can remember this season. Um, uh, I don't. Which is unusual to me because she's so. Uh, this is not a talent issue, this is not a limitation issue. Um, that, it's just that something is clearly off kilter. Mm -hmm. in her whole energy that that she's making uncharacteristic mistakes and mm -hmm. you know um it, do you go on antibiotics every day for like a i have a been. Sinus? yeah okay yeah and what is the major rule whatever you do you will start to feel better throughout the course of the antibiotics but the mm -hmm. worst thing you could ever do is to stop your antibiotics is to stop the antibiotic because you start to feel temporarily better and then suddenly you're worse off than you were before and um it's not that I'm frustrated with American pairs, but let me tell you why I'm frustrated with American pairs. It's because I think both of the teams here were taking antibiotics. Mm -hmm. I think that um, metaphorically, this is horrible, this whole thing, but like Danny and Tara were making strides by doing different innovative programs. Mm -hmm. Chris and Alexa were taking strides by actually like starting to look at pointed toes, extension, mm -hmm transitions, you know, next level kind of things. And then in my opinion, they both bailed before the treatment was over. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now we're back to not only what was before, but we kind of lost what you even had before. So now it's just a little bit, I don't know what's happening, even though they have a bronze, but you know, the bronze that Alexa and Chris won is very different than the bronze than Elisaveta won with a triple axel. You know sure. what I mean? That is true, although it was a rather stacked pair field here in terms of... Um, one of the interesting things, just to point out, is that Kirsten and Michael were here, and this is the team that the USFS, um, we've learned, is really um, looking to uh, be competitive with. So they want whichever team goes to Worlds to be competitive with Kirsten and Michael and to be neck and neck with them. So that's kind of the benchmark for who they're looking for. And I think that this is an interesting thing when we watch our teams and you know watch scores throughout the season who is really achieving these scores, who's not. So Alexa and Chris are kind of the most likely pair. Um, also, we heard that at Champs Camp, the the pair coaches had a meeting um, with Mitch and with everyone, and they were saying that they felt that in the, la in the past few years, the pairs weren't really going to these events to win. They were just happy to be there. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's really true or false. Like, I don't think anyone's just like... I think everyone wants to do well, but I think that, that, first of all, I think that could have been phrased completely differently in what they really meant. But um, he was saying that they weren't, I think what he's saying is that they weren't really competitive, you know, for medals. And last season, the field was really stacked and it was tough to be competitive. And I don't think the U.S. pairs really were in the conversation. Um, oh, yeah, not at all. And it was an outrageously deep field. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, oh, American pairs. It was certainly a part of that, but mm -hmm. it was also the fact that like, you know, even when Megan was talking about, we're talking about 12th place teams, 13th place teams that are giving a very fine mm. product at that yeah. Olympics. So it, it makes sense to me that there was just never a chance. But I think Eliana was right. You know, she had this pipe dream of them being on the world mm. podium. Mm -hmm. And you look at Kirsten and Michael. And do you remember when you were talking to Frank and he was like, you look at Arena and you look at Michelle and you're wondering, like, how is this? even a comparison mm -hmm. and on paper 
I think Chris and Alexa have far more potential, and I think the original versions of their programs are far mm -hmm. superior to, yeah. to Kristen and Michael's. But I don't. It doesn't matter if you're going to water down that program, and if you're not going to deliver it, it does, and it doesn't matter then. And you are suddenly not competitive, even though you ideally mm -hmm. could be leaps and bounds ahead mm -hmm. of them. And it's as if they don't even realize it. Yeah. So I've learned more about um, what happened. You know, in that split um and you could see it on the ice because they've actually gone back and changed things and this is where the conflict was with aliona um but one of the things that was a real sticking point is that you know they had changed the technique and she talked about this on the show about how they were going to do their patterns and how they were going to do their mm. entrances whether you know you do it from a mohawk or about outside three to a mohawk for a sow cow and different entrances to make the jump more successful when you of course when you change your entrance to a jump and you change how you perform it it becomes different it becomes uncomfortable and the consistency takes a while to get there the other thing is that you also have competitions and then you have skater panic and you have the skaters who want to just go back to what was comfortable but the whole reason you went to aliona was to make the jump better and more successful right. But you may have to swallow the bitterness. Is the term finish? The... Finish the antibiotic. Yeah, finish the <laughs> and antibiotic. Then you can decide if you need a surgery instead of an antibiotic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, your skater panic terminology, I think, really resonates here because, like you were saying, she changed everything because mm -hmm. if you—that's why you went to her, mm -hmm. and you could see the seedlings, and it's just. I think what's missing sometimes in the world of skating, and we mm -hmm. can talk about this in several moments throughout mm -hmm. this competition, people are missing the big picture. Yeah. It wasn't about them winning Nebelhorn. Yeah. It was about them trying, and they may be last place. All those years that Mao was like mm -hmm. scraping the bottom of the barrel in the placements, Elisabetta, mm -hmm. who's come back out of nowhere, she knew that there was a trajectory and she would be fine, and she was the only one who needed to know it. Mm -hmm. But so if you don't get immediate results, it's such this like, um, I don't know if it's a, a product of the time or a product of our culture or something that if it wasn't immediate gratification, we just bail. Well, I think with social media too, like if you don't do well at Neville Horn, people will panic. Oh my God, they lost. They were supposed to win and you get all this But feedback. let them, let, let them, them panic. Yeah, let them you panic. Have to, you would have to have your own sense mm -hmm. of self and uh, mm -hmm. confidence enough to not even worry about it. And we've talked about this even mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. There are skaters who... I think if we're being honest, enjoy it as a guilty pleasure. Some skaters avoid mm -hmm. programs like this because they don't want that feedback because they're doing a thing. It doesn't matter what people say. And there are other people who really want to combat anything that's ever said about them. And those people are the weaker competitors to me because you, you've got your head in the wrong place. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what anybody else says. If you really believe what you're going for and Aliona did and I think actually a lot of people really believed in what Aliona was going to do for them yeah so so what they have changed so far they've changed their jump entrances to both um and in the past we've seen that Delilah would let Alexa and Chris do side by side double toes um but then you get into a problem where they never become consistent when you start changing which elements are in the program if you stick with the triples and you miss them in the beginning you'll at least get somewhere, even if they're unsuccessful. And of course it's hard when you fall and stuff, but in pairs, you know, you really need to set the program, not make a million changes to things. Constantly. Um, yeah. So you have zero familiarity every time mm -hmm. you go out. It has to be unsettling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we did see that Chris actually did come around with the jumps last season. He's actually been uh, the more consistent. He's been, he's been great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he hasn't done the toe, but she did the toe here. That is not his best jump. I think that the, it will come um, if they keep doing it. The other thing is... And they, they were showing... Sorry to interrupt, but they were interrupting the, the beautiful... <clears throat> they were doing these extensions with him, those these big kicks, and they started to take out a lot of those. And I was like, yeah. you're actually taking out the thing that made me relook at Chris. Yeah. And I don't know what that's So about. they've watered it down. They look slower to be more consistent. Um, but it, it's worked in the long run. The thing is, is that someone put it to me um, that, you know, it's like they've taken five steps forward and maybe two to three steps back. So they have gotten stuff from their time with Aliona and their work with Benoit. It's just, we're not just seeing as many steps forward now. It's not like they've right. got, they're, they're not like worse off than they were when they were with Delilah. Like they have gained from this experience, but it's not, um, 
it's not as we won't see as much as we were getting. You know, they've taken out the difficult entrance uh, to the twist. You know, they've taken out some of those transitions. Obviously, the entrance into the jumps. She, Alexa does look more comfortable. So in the short term, that is a benefit. I think in the long term, we won't see you know dividends paying off for them. I don't think we're going to see them on the world podium, but we will see them perhaps be more comfortable win the U.S. Nationals. And I think um, that they will have another international competition before uh, U.S. Nationals. So, And, and it's interesting because there, there has been some backlash I've seen on, in various social media outlets where they're like, why does everyone think Eliana was so good just because she won a gold medal? And I was like, no, there were legitimate changes that we were seeing mm -hmm. being done. Things like we don't accept as more interesting. And then it, it's as if then, you know, Eliana was trying to help them quit smoking or something. And Alexa still wants to grab like little pups here and there. And th she finally then just found someone who lets her. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. And again, they'll probably win nationals. They'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's it is a story of what might have been mm -hmm. this season and next. But it's a shame. And the same thing about Danny and Tara. I thought them changing out the short program was the absolute wrong move. Total um, step backwards. It was very disappointing to me. So there are two and things about that. And you made a very that. interesting observation about well, that. Well, it did, but a couple things. Um, there's the fact that they changed the program. Their program was never the problem, but it gives people no, an excuse in an the hour. Best part. Yeah. yeah, but it's not very Delilah. It was created by Jim and Tara. And that's it's like a little out there for Colorado, and that got changed. The problem is, is that they kind of ripped off Camille and Drew's free skate, and Montreal uh, skaters definitely alerted to that. So you kind of have taken your competitor's program and then doing it. So that's you know strike one. I think the other program was more interesting and made Much. me actually look at you. I think that Camille and Drew do this softness better than Tara Kane. Also. She went for kind of the harsh look this season, and then now you're trying to give us soft? I don't buy you as soft. Like, Tara Kane is a lot of things, you know? I don't know you, and it's because I feel like I, I'm not... The projection is one of confusion. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm watching. I see a team that's unsure of its voice, unsure of its aesthetic, unsure of its technique right now. And again, I thought, well, at least they had two killer programs mm -hmm. and now they just completely did that like instant just add water basic Colorado program you know yeah. here's the thing is that I just think we have to look at what is Tara and Danny's long-term potential I mean look they have been together for a lot of years now they went through two Olympic trials didn't make the Olympics in either um, now what or what is the goal what is the purpose for skating uh, to make four continents. I mean, they, they did pull off a win last year, but we have not seen them ever improve technically. Um, their Tara skating skills have not improved. Like, that's, that is not improved. Um, I think Danny's a really great skater. I know you really believe in his ability. I am obsessed with his skating and some of the lifts and all this sort of stuff. And she, it, it's, the thing is, it's not just on like, oh, everything but the jump or mm. everything but the blah, blah, blah. A lot of the pairs elements too, Danny is doing all the work. So she's I not mean, really holding herself in the lift and you can yes. see it, which makes it a cold press for him. So if he it's did have dead a dead weight. Yeah. yeah. If you had a partner who were who was assisting him, you could imagine what they could accomplish. So exactly. we have to talk about their jumps because they have not gotten better and we're in a new quadrennium and that they've had to change it because they can't do the hop in between the double axles anymore that doesn't count as a sequence so that's why they're switching to the triple sow cow oiler double sow cow the other reason they're changing is because tara can't do a double toe so like cannot like can't do it so but she really if you really start to look at her jumps and i actually i find it more glaring now on the pattern they have her sow cow has never been good and it's been brought up before but now that everyone is talking about shoma uno and his jumps and that flip, my eye is like really watching like when is the pre-rotation like deductible? When is it like really cheating in the jump? And you know, with the thing and and I think the ISU is gonna continue to harp on this. And the thing is, is when you look at Tara's jumps and you look at the sip the triple sow, she cheats it on both sides. And she aggressively cheats the sow cow more than I've ever seen someone cheat, like from Delaware doing a toe axle. More than like 
the Delaware toe axle that we have seen okay. from all of Jeff D's students over the years. Like, really go and watch it. And they're doing the sow cows on a very, very circular pattern. Like, Danny, what he's doing, he's having to do, like, the oiler and the double sow, like, from a complete straight body and just yeah. kind of wing it to try to help her because she's completely unable to do the sow normally, correctly. And it's, and it's cheated on both sides, and it doesn't help for the better jump. And then on the other problem... Is it, so the double axle is is what it is with her. She did, you know, it wasn't good here, but we've seen her do double axles before. The other problem they have is the, the throw triple sow. She's also cheating the throw, Jonathan. She takes off on the throw sow completely forwards. Like, not even like a little bit forwards. Like, she is facing front. Like, it's really a throw double axle. Like, you know, well, and even, even watch the... Um the takeoffs into those throws, you know, they love that. Like she crouches up and he holds her in front. Oh and then, but yes. Up. And she literally is just like, it's like a trust fall. She's like, here, take me. And then you see Danny be like, Ugh. so it is I, a obviously cool she's entrance. It's very fit. It's very fine. But it's literally the way they're doing the entrance. He's doing twice the work. Yeah. So the other, then the other thing is that now they have to do the back outside death spiral this season, and this is not their good death spiral. So they're not getting the levels on the death spiral. Like, they're not getting any levels because you, Tara doesn't go a full rev with her head below her knee in the back outside death spiral. So they're not getting a back outside death spiral. Two, three, four. They're just getting credit for doing it. And that's a big problem because they're missing so many points. So when we look at who's going to be competitive... Just where is your long term potential? I don't I don't see this as a team that could go to worlds regardless of what they do. I will say their twist has gotten a lot better with Delilah. It does look It did. It, it did, did look it, it looked more organized to mm-hmm. me. Like it was clearer in their steps um, and how it was going. It got a plus GOE. I see how that is being addressed. But so that is a plus, yeah. I did do some research, Jonathan, because I was thinking about you and thinking about these US pairs. Thanks, Dave. I think about you often as well. <laughs> but I know you love Danny. I do. I think he's just the best. <laughs> and you know oh. I love our Whitney Houston, Deanna, you know, Stilato. Mm-hmm. And they're both from Chicago. Mm-hmm. And they're both were taught by Cindy Caprol. So they have the same oh. technique. Which we obviously respond to. And they both have partners who can't get it done and they both have gym pair technique because they've had that training and Deanna is shorter than Tara so that size wouldn't be a problem why doesn't Mitch just put them together send them to Aliona give us at least a potential for a second pair it's not like they haven't given these pairs a try Danny and Tara have been together for seven, eight years. It hasn't gone anywhere. Oh, yeah, anywhere. yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, back to the, the old um, adage that was just going at it was mm-hmm. that everyone said that pairs don't stay together long enough. No, this and is a problem. That's a, a never... noble concept, but mm-hmm. they have to be matched right. And, mm-hmm. and that's that's the art. And then when you're matched right, you don't have to keep switching. <laughs> yeah. So, Or you don't have to keep staying together and beating a dead horse when you know... The minute, you know, you can switch, it can elevate so much. I, I don't think anyone will leave anyone. I think it appears on the total outside that Danny and, and Tara are in it together. Well, I don't think, I think that you need to relook at that. If you're Danny's age, why would you keep banging your head against the wall if the potential isn't there? Because I think sometimes, just like you're saying about Mitch, some of these skaters become... Um, resigned to the fact that they are not top six skaters they are shooting for top 10 in an ideal world and they forget like someone like danny could be on a world uh podium with his ability someone like alexa and chris they if they um had a cleaner season their their material and their raw ability could have put them in this grand prix final no problem in my opinion based on the two pairs fields they had they could have meddled at both of them so. But would you, but I wouldn't advise Tara and Danny to keep going together at this point. Right. And that's but just, does, Dan, does Danny realize that um, he has real star quality? I don't know what kind of mentality. But if your partner has been off the ice for several summers and they've always had limitations that aren't getting better, like what do you, 
Dude, at one point, if we're going to actually try to move forward in U.S. skating, look, we're talking about this because our ladies have been in the absolute shitter. Like, the absolute bottom of the barrel, way worse than U.S. pairs. Um, you know, you look at, um, you know, the nice team that won Junior Worlds. They can't really skate, especially, you know, the girls on the straight leg. It's, you know, they have niceness, but they look very, like, novice junior, and apparently they're full-time students. Skating's not really, you know, their priority. So I think if you want to look at what the Russians are doing, what the Chinese are doing, they at least match them correctly to give them a shot. Then they give them the better coaching. Then you give them the better material. Then you get to the... When you start with the partners that shouldn't be together in the first place, it's it's a real problem, and I think that they need to... But see, if I were Mitch... If I were Mitch Moyer, yikes, mm-hmm. then I would actually, well, and I can have you to go back to novices. Okay. Yeah, I have to. I need to let go of the grip then of what's happening right now in mm-hmm. pairs and set the stage like the Korean Federation did and go back. <laughs> Mitch needs to be honing in on novice pairs and early junior mm-hmm. pairs to get this in order so that by the time it culminates to this level, it's been sorted out. I think like finding Danny a partner, all those years of trying to find Rockney a partner, it's too late. It I would put them so together. I would put Deanna and Danny together. I would just give it. I would just go for it and make one attempt at a second stronger pair because Alexa and Chris are never going to do more than they need to do now unless they have a team that can challenge them to be the best in the U.S. And I don't see a team that has any... Kane and LaDuke had a couple of wins at some very weak competition fields and they were with cheetah triples and you know and he's a very good skater mismatched partnership the potential isn't there there's just limitations to it it can only go so far and it's enjoyable to watch Mm -hmm. but it can only be so competitive at least make a second team that has a little bit of talent like a shot in hell you know and we don't have that right now and I think that right. that's what they need to at least do to if they ever want to increase competition and depth. At least we have Brady and Mariah Bell who can at least compete with one another in the ladies. And I think right. that's what we right. need to look at. As far as Kirsten and Michael goes, they did change the double axle Euler triple sow cow to a triple sow double toe. They uh, combination. It did not look um, comfortable yet. I think it was a three jump combo. Sorry. Um, but it looked off. Um They had some mistakes. She missed the throw. I really like them. Uh, Like, I really like her. I really liked their free skate last year. To me, this program just kind of dies. And it dies before they get into another brick in the wall. Like, they're going up into the lift. And, um, like, the music is going. And I'm like, this program is just dead. Like, it's just... It's it's antiquated to me. And and, um, so it's not... It's not one I need to go back and watch usually. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like to me she she's has... tremendous. Yeah. She's she has a tremendous talent and she's a tremendous woman. Mm-hmm. Like I have so enjoyed her story and her journey and her honesty and vulnerability and like interviews and social media and things like that. I think mm-hmm. I, I root for her on a personal level. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just a um, choreographer issue. That's just a personal preference thing. I just don't happen to like this aesthetic and it seems to constantly be coming out of that area. It just seems to me like she lost her mojo after the original pair split with Dylan, and it's never fully come back because they've never consistently had vehicles and believed in everything. Like it just, it always is a little bit of a struggle. It's improving, but it's it's you know it's a struggle. And then apparently, you know, Justine Brasseur has this ginormous twist with her partner, so you know there's going to be more competition in Canada in the coming years in pairs. So that's going to be interesting to watch as well. Um, as far as the other teams, I still think Pung and Jin, like, even if the jumps are a struggle, they had, do have such wonderful quality. They really I just... I like them. I, I just, like it. it's just nice. And it was just happy because I was getting a little, um, uh, worked up mm-hmm. over Alexa and Chris. And I was worked up over Kirsten. I was worked up over Danny and, uh, Tara, Tara. And then all of a sudden out comes a whimsical carefree team that is exuding the joy of skating the the unison on the triple toe double toe Mm -hmm. was immense i mean it was just what else did i say oh even his facial expression in those lifts Mm -hmm. just nothing you know even the finest pairs guys you see that like that final you know facial expression moment of angst he's just popping her right on up they're having a nice time the twist was great in the short program 
Do you remember? Um, I can't remember if it was Hannah Miller. Remember that? <laughs> or um, who should have done it, hairs? Yes. Oh so yes. Um, and uh, Mariah Bell. It was one of mm-hmm. the two of them. And there was uh, maybe it was like. 14, 15, somewhere around there. And they had a short program or something like that that was all like bottle cap sounds and like oh my God. I have to go back and look for it. I should have done that before. I just blatantly tried to make some generic thing. But it was um, a fun, whimsical, just carefree vibe. It wasn't necessarily profound. It wasn't necessarily the most stunning. But I, it was just a nice feeling I had while watching it. And, and the time went by very quickly, even though it was marginally cheesy, family-style content from the 50s. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Well, I love, I really do like Pung and Jin, even if I don't trust them on the jumps. But I do think they give a lot of opportunities to give in the pluses in other uh, areas. So, and then Zabi Aqua and Enbert look the best they've ever looked. I mean, they're landing the jumps. I don't know if I see world medalist potential, They, but they seem like an also-ran team. But they're getting it done so far this season consistently, and their marks are there, going up as a result. A couple of the pairs events on the Grand Prix have been weaker, mm-hmm. um, and they are taking advantage of opportunities given to them. And I have to admire that because several yeah. others are not. Yeah. So. And they look better than they did last year, even if I don't love the material. Um, I do look at them again, you know, like they, they find, I'm watching. So I think. And I was like, I wonder if, like, and I know this sounds trite, but something like the haircut was, are we supposed to be thinking of Stolbova? Are we just supposed to be looking anew? Mm-hmm. You know, so she sticks out a little bit more and then she stood up there mm-hmm. or then she sat in the kiss and cry with Nina Moser, a.k.a. Elton John with those mm-hmm. white glasses. And I thought, oh, my gosh, it's the same haircut. Mm-hmm. It's just that one is blonde and one is black. And it's both kind of like Russian old lady styling. Then when I saw yeah. her hair next to Nina, I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> Do you think that Stobova and Nikolai are really in love? Or is this, is she working him because she was kind of pushed out of Moser camp and that she needed a place to go and someone to believe in her and get her a partner and get her back to the top? Like, is she using him or is he doing his normal thing with the women? Because, I mean, we've seen him date many of the partners and they're now together. It's just, it just seems like two operators together. And it's, I'm very fascinated by this. I mean, it, okay. it seems Moment like... Moment of honesty, Dave. Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Stobova and Nikolai Morozov together. Yeah? Coach on ice, off ice. I have no, I had no idea this was happening. Yes, and she has a new partner who's going to escape. They found, they plucked her, someone, and he's going to compete for Russia, and yeah. Somehow this entire... He was a Russian who skated for France, and I think, and now they're going to skate for Russia. And, but we're not sure if they're going to Russian nationals, but she did have, she has a partner there in it. Go back to that, when we talked about Megan, she kind of drop that little nugget i mean we had heard yeah but... she and she like every time like a nugget from her is dropped and it's so amazing i'm always like mm-hmm. and i was like i don't know what she's talking about i'm gonna have to look that up afterwards yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay so okay. they they yeah. found Stobova like a new token russian boy and they're waiting for him to get up to speed and then return to competition and, and klimov is just finished he's just finished yeah that's who i enjoyed him i know i, I, enjoyed him. I don't think yeah, she did okay. though Clearly. <laughs> we saw that a couple times, like at that Europeans th- throw yeah. incident. Yeah. 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 He saw it too. <laughs> I just want to say, like, is Stobova, like, I'm cynical, but, like, I don't believe this is true love. Like, this, when I heard, like, she's with me, I'm like, wait. <laughs> yeah. That's... I'm sorry. I don't know. It's so funny. Like, there are so many things that we watch, um, you know, USA Gymnastics and all this stuff when they're talking about safe sport we need to have a thing and like why isn't it skating and like I'm like well in skating the coaches are just sleeping with the students out in the open and it's not just one so yeah they don't even have the shame enough to hide it like yeah. that's what's insane yeah that's amazing so, amazing but you, you know glass houses you know that's and, yeah <laughs> and that's the Paris event okay. that is the Paris event and we'll we'll be watching I mean I'm watching yeah. this um, yeah yeah but let's talk about Mr. Shoma Uno and his triple axel. And I loved the Instagram story you put up of the hair tossel right after. The I mean, jump. that is a transition. That is a creative yeah. and difficult That's entry and five. exit. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, one of his best elements. I, I will say that, you know, his quad flip was already like his jumps for me were already dicey. It's now just been completely like eviscerated and ruined, but 
I do really enjoy his skating, his body line, the carriage, um, the full extension on the spins. Um, he does that probably the best in the men's field. He also does have a smaller stature, but he makes it so he skates big. big. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. you know, he's shorter, but he extends everything. So he has that uh, working against him that he makes into a strength. And it's stunning. He takes up space. He takes yeah. up space uh, vertically and horizontally. And it's really amazing. And he just ticks things off. Everything feels cool mm-hmm. when he does it. Everything seems collected. Now, when we talk about his lack of check, sometimes Mm -hmm. and this kind of swingy thing that happens so i also see in the right arm Mm -hmm. and you have to you have to tell me about this so he does this thing where when he lands he always if the churning if the turning of the arm like this as he lands is to try to fix that or if somehow that's a part of the problem it's very once i cut my eye kind of honed in on the actual full-blown rotation of the so right your arm, arm is supposed to check and your arm is supposed to stop and that, to the point you can get shoulder you know issues but that is interesting i'm gonna have to look at that because we watch arm... it because yeah you see because you were like watch his landings because what it needs is a solid check mm-hmm. but he doesn't and so it keeps turning and so I see it and he almost starts it and then I don't know if that creates the turn or if the turn is creating that. And it's weird because he's pre-rotating and he does everything on kind of like a, dia- a curved diagonal, It everything is to help, like we talked about Tara's pattern, he has the same thing with the pattern to try to help him with the upper body but I would imagine that that's this is all part of a problem with his jumping, you know, basic jumping technique, especially on the toe jumps, I think, really, right. especially the flip. Um, but, you know, it does seem to hurt his consistency. That's the one thing is that Shoma Uno is probably... A wild card sometimes. I'm trying to put this in the right way. Like, Hanyu is the best overall, like, the king, right? Shoma is the best performer. If you think, like, the fully engagement of from, like, head to toe, who goes out and just gives it like 300 percent you know energy but he cannot skate a clean program typically because the jumps are a problem and the technique fails him and that's interesting you know i was looking at and i'm doing another judging video that i'm going to have out on tuesday and we talk about uh, one of the things in there as i did this short program of the men i did i did nathan hanyu and shoma and i looked at their short programs the technical elements from their first grand prix and the thing is, is that the judges often, and this is just kind of human nature, if you're falling on a, on a quad and then you're going into a spin, they're typically not going to give you a plus four or plus five on an element that follows a fall. It's just human nature. And because it seems rushed is the entrance as complex as yeah. it would have been otherwise. And you see all of these landings that require so much, like a lot of them on the riding out edge are including hops and a mm-hmm. turn or a thing. And then all of that momentum gets mucked up. Yeah. So he actually did probably like a plus four uh, spin right after his quad flip, but he falls on the flip. And then you look and the judges went plus two, plus three on, a, on an element that was better than that. But I was right. looking, you know, and why is this? And the judges have actually told the skaters that if you are in the negative, especially once, more than once, it is hard to psychologically go to the positive. It just takes right. more than an element you, to go You there. just put yourself in a different column. Yeah. And as you say, as so many GOEs and PCS things, they're gut responses. Yeah. And, and, and if I think you're in trouble and I now have anxiety during your program, even when you do it great, I'm worried. Yeah. I'm worried, and then you've you've ruined it. Now, just, but it's also um, some skaters that I respond to artistically are responding to every nuance in the music, are telling a story, are being vulnerable. Shama doesn't quite even do those exact things. There's just a state of being that's so wonderful, and it's placement of things. Mm-hmm. The two triple axles in the free skate are incredibly timed, and they are timed in not a traditional boom in the music mm-hmm. and and it's like there's one in a moment of silence right before the music changes and it's such a cool mo- you know which what i'm talking about <laughs> I, it's just like it, where other people wouldn't think to put a jump there mm-hmm. they would have gone for a big boom and then they would have put it instead of where they did and i love mm-hmm. that they're thinking funky and also i tended to watch most of the men's 
uh, broadcast in the Russian feed for some reason, even though I joined NBC mm -hmm. Gold. <laughs> and to hear uh, Tarasova say the word Euler is mm -hmm. pretty funny. Yeah, oh. that's my new favorite thing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go and look at, yeah. for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, the other men here, obviously, this was a big opportunity for Vincent Zoe, uh, You know, you look at the rankings and this was Jonathan again. Tammy and Tom, first of all, there was no reason for both of them to be here at this competition. That's ridiculous. They have a million and all one skaters. All the way in Japan, yeah. All the way I in mean... Japan, they have all those Korean skaters at home preparing for their nationals for their season. They have sectionals is coming this week, so we're going to watch our boy Sean Rabbit go out there and skate it. Uh, I really, I, I'm like, they're both here, and they're, they're competing against each other, and we know that they're both tough. Um... It looks like in the tension, and they don't seem to be a cohesive team, it looks like they're fighting for Vincent. That's, you know, very kind of... And it's interesting, um, I, because we know that, now I watch and make all this backstory up in my head about what's going it's on. It's probably but not I, far from the truth. Like... Well, I, I'd like to think I'm perceptive. <laughs> it's, there is, um, there's an affinity he has for Tammy. Mm-hmm. He comes off the ice. Now, again, it could all be stagey and it could all be weird. She's giving him the guards. He's hugging her. He's emoting with her mm -hmm. in the kiss and cry, if anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and Tom may be there also helping with the jumps. But um, there does seem to be a, a back history with Tammy. So I'm wondering if, if Tammy may help focus him more or if it's gotten too comfortable and it's not helping him focus enough. There's never been a formula because... If you think Shoma's hit and miss, technically, I mean, I can't, I can't get, I can't tell up from down with Vincent. I just have no idea. And it's some of the things like his choreographic sequence in the free with the straight leg that he's doing it on a. But look at the moves that were given to mm -hmm. him, and I think the choreographic sequence given is of quality. I think the choreographed sequence as it was performed was not of quality. Like, I think the material, if skated by someone else, that choreographic sequence could have been very effective, but you see it's by someone who who can't really open, who can't really release. But and look then at his look leg. At, I know. Not just the, it's not just the posture from there. It, the, the ankle, the knee on the ice is so, it's so piss poor. At this level, I just don't think, I think, we, you know, Tom has spent so much time talking about the jumps. And when you look at the overall program, I just don't see the quality in, in really anything. And I'm like, why are we and, fighting and over him? This is like, because he has a quad. I mean, the quads are cheated. There's just such a ceiling at the end of the day with this skater. If they're not going to improve the skating skills, it's just not there. I mean, Miyamata told him <laughs> that you, you can't skate. And I know that like, we're now seeing them do figures once a week, which is a great start. Um... At Bare minimum. Colorado. Yeah. But yeah. there's just like the overall skating, I think, with Vincent. It's just so glaring and it looks so forced. And the program is so just jarring when you watch that for four and a half minutes. Yeah. Or four minutes. You yeah. Know, it's just really, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. So here, okay, I have two, two other comments. I was trying to, because I'm trying to hone in. I was mm -hmm. like, Jonathan's just stop being like, nah, it's no good. Try to, try to figure out what exactly is. It's also... Um, you're talking about the legs and the, his arms don't open. They only go mm -hmm. forward. They don't seem to go side to side. But also it's in his actual um, tailbone. Mm -hmm. um, in, in certain like movement things, like if you think of the way like a duck would stand and you like puff out, you know, mm -hmm. like, like your tailbone like that. It's, it's, I mean, he almost is doing that at times. Mm -hmm. And other times he's almost tucking his tailbone in like a dog, you know, that's mm -hmm. afraid. And um, it's just so distracting because it, it brings the whole thing out of its center. And if, if truly you are Tammy and um, Tom and you're sitting there and you're like, it's, it's a lost cause to, mm -hmm. to help his edges and stuff like that. There are things you can do in the meantime. He is trying quad lutzes or quad flips or whatever he's trying, <laughs> like, let it be exciting. Mm -hmm. Make a music, a, a selection that just builds up to huge cinematic bomb kind of moments so that when he like hurls into a jump, we at least are excited that he's doing it. Because when you put it in the context of something that's supposed to be soft and the, the, this music is beautiful and nuanced and it doesn't, 
it's it's not being met. And even the costume, he's got the black on one side and the white on the other and a short collar, which then is accentuating a, an oddity in his shoulder department and neck placement and a belt that's too high that's showing he's, like there are things you could do to help hide it. Mm -hmm. And I don't see those disguises being utilized to help him. Yeah. He also loves to um, write long, long paragraph posts about every competition. And and look, he does have injuries, but at the same time, it's not that I don't have like empathy for him, but he also has trained himself into the ground. I've personally witnessed him doing Quad South House for more than an hour, just like in a pattern, popping, falling, popping, you know, without anyone stopping him or really correcting. And you have Tom who's gonna let you train yourself into the ground. You have Tammy who's gonna let yourself train yourself into the ground. It's like at a certain point, where is the adult in the room? If it's and not it's efficient, like, yeah, it's, without really taking the time to think about the entrances or the air position or the rotation, doesn't help you when push comes to shove. If you can do 30 at home, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that's tough. Versus um, my boy, Dimitri Aliyev. Yes, he two of your girls this week we're gonna discuss in the same effing show. Kostanaya and Aliyev, <laughs> let it wash <laughs> over us. The, the quad toe, yes, Jonathan. Well, I wrote down about your boy, Aliyev, and I, you know, I think he does have quality, but I did write down um, double toe, um, single and it was a Look, uh, it was such a great single lutz. It was one of the finest single lutzes of the competition, I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he wrote an apology on Instagram. Like um, Vincent? And yeah. No, no, not yeah. like Vincent. He just wrote, well, it's not the competition I'd hoped for. Sorry, hopefully next time goes better. Thanks for everything. I and I was that. like, and, and that's how you do a whoops, my bad post. Yeah. <laughs> like, not a diatribe. Not, not, woe is me, not attention seeking, just like a, hey, it was great to be in Japan. Sorry, I kind of messed that one up. I'm going to get back to the drawing board and we'll be back at it. What's your favorite skater dire tribe that has ever happened after a competition in the Instagram post department? There have been oh, some real doozy. Dave. Oh, Dave, I have to think. Oh, um, well, I mean, not really, but just my social media favorite right now is obviously Elisabetta. When someone wrote, oh. someone tweeted her, I, I don't know if you reposted this or something, where it was like, so what's your secret plan on how to win the Grand Prix oh, final? Loved it. And she's like, oh, easy, just tell the other girls it's in Montreal instead yes. of Vancouver. <laughs> so in general, I'm like, I'm team Elisabetta on social media, but I've, I've got to think about some of those diatribes. To me, there it'll were... always be Jordan Moller's in the WTF category when he talked about going outside after nationals into a park with a homeless man and a homeless man came up to him and tried to help. That, in terms of like someone needs to self edit this, in the terms of yeah. <laughs> is that yeah. is the greatest Instagram post after a competition that I've ever seen. I mean, well, I, for, for a period, I thought my phone needed like a breathalyzer before I could get on uh, Facebook Messenger. <laughs> and I feel it's like the same kind of thing. Like you shouldn't be allowed to post maybe for a couple hours or so after you compete. <laughs> Dear. Well, we did have Sergey Voronov on the medal stand. Looks like he'll be going to the Grand Prix final, believe it or not. Potentially, uh, that was just a shocker. Just in terms of, like, like Zabiakwa and Enbert really um, taking advantage of exactly. missed opportunities from Aliyev and from uh, Vincent Zoe. This was a very different outcome than we expected. And Matteo Rizzo, really? Look, I mean, it's it's not my favorite program he's the nicest eyelashes we've ever seen maybe in skating um he and you know what's interesting about his axle technique what is <laughs> incident about his axle technique and his eyelashes jonathan i yeah. need you to tell me because i don't know because oh. you know when we see some of them they do that big step up you see like a real mm. hoist up with that mm. leg and both he and aliyev just kind of like go across instead okay. of stepping up Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's something that really interests me because it makes me think at the takeoff, especially for Matteo, mm -hmm. that I don't think he's going to make it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, it actually totally worked. It's just a, it's a bit more of a glidey across the ice mm -hmm. than a step up and over that I guess I'm accustomed to. It's, a, it's an interesting it's thing. It's not the Ilya Kulik, Alexei Yagudin axle by any means. Yeah. I think yeah, that's... it's not a Stairmaster. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was always taught, you know, the... When you do axles, you're supposed to like 
put your leg like you're stepping up, you know, a flight yeah, of stairs. Yeah, yeah, like you're going up. And yeah. then this really just went across. It was it was unique. It's so. unique. Um, yeah, but so the men's event was a, not the greatest of the events here, but it was an interesting one. There were some other ones, but let's talk about the ice dance because obviously Papa Dox and Cicerone were not here. A huge disappointment to not see them and their new programs. I think we're all really looking forward to France now to see the debut, but they, there was a, a surprise in that Hawaii and Baker really capitalized. We knew that they had done a new kind of Marie France-ish vibe with their work. He had a concussion, which is why they've missed so much of um, the fall. Uh, and they had gotten great momentum over the summer with their training. Um, it obviously affected their levels in the short. He wasn't getting any of the key points. I think he got one for four on um, in the short dance. Uh, I think overall, though, I like their look so much better. They really work with Marie Franz, and she gave them the good program. Some of the, her material hasn't been my favorite this year, but this team, I really think it works for them, and it just needs more time and more uh, growth. I thought that they just... Caitlin's actual skating and balance over the blade has improved so much since they have been um, in Montreal. I really noticed that... She looks a million times better. He's always looked great, but she looks like a much stronger uh, skater now. What did you think of them? Uh, different. I had a different experience. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, and that's great. Look how interesting the show is when we don't always just agree. We agree, obviously, but I, I mean, he's exquisite, mm. and there's no even point in belaboring their, their size limitations because it's mm-hmm. been discussed to death. What I will say is I noticed his slightness more this time than I have in the past. And I think, again, it sounds trite. Mm -hmm. Putting him in a chopped costume where Mm -hmm. there's a shirt and pants, it's it's asking me to look at how short the torso is and how small the legs are. If you just put him in one color, don't don't even draw my attention to it because Mm -hmm. it also, his lines, his knees, his edges. It's like some of the most exquisite skating ever. Um, And I guess I need to, as I look at the material, remember I need to put them in like a Neville Horn category right Mm -hmm. now. And and I didn't, I put them in a full blown in the running of of Grand Prix events. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it fell short to me, but but you're right. I, I probably need to let them find their way a little bit more. I didn't find it as like, as light as I had hoped. And I thought their um, last year's short dance Mm -hmm. compared to this year's rhythm dance, uh, he was so amazing Mm -hmm. with that Latin energy previously and it just didn't capture the same I thought they looked more mature this year. I thought that they looked more senior. I thought it was a big step forward because we saw that same program, that same kind of energy for five years from them. And I thought that it was a real step forward. I I don't know. Uh, I thought that they just looked more like contenders than they had in the past. I thought it looked more credible. um, And it, it looked a step, a notch ahead. I think they have a lot of work to do, obviously. Um, But it's the kind of thing that makes me wonder if they had moved when Hubble and Donahue did, mm. if they would have gotten, you know, this happens everywhere. It's mm-hmm. flavor of the month. And Marie France is not just like a casual flavor of the month. That whole team is obviously very brilliant. This mm-hmm. isn't just smoke and mirrors like happens with other coaches that people mm-hmm. keep flocking to. Um, but I, I think we are amongst that time, which we anticipated and feared would come, which is just it's oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I guess I had probably set my expectations far too high. I think it's going to take time. I don't know. I think it's, yeah, I think right. I see you're a lot right. of improvement already. Um, actually, I think they have really benefited from moving to refronts. I think some of the teams that have been there, to me, look less effective. Like, I thought, I see. like, like Caroline and Shane, I really think that Caroline was like fighting him in the free dance almost. She looked so tight and he always looks kind of laid back and their energy with their more modern aesthetic and the free dance, it's, they ha- it hasn't been working this year and they've kind of fallen under our radar a bit, but it, it hasn't gotten better. And it just looks yeah. like two people like fighting each other and I'm not sure where this is going at the same point. Like if it's just they're not skating together, it looks a wreck a lot of times and it gets sloppy. And it's also, they've had some experience. So, and maybe they're just feeling more pressure. I'm not sure. 
Um, but there was definitely a lot of competition in that rink, but they look to not be super benefiting from it right now. I actually think the Chinese team, even though they don't always hit all their levels, I think their overall look on the ice has improved. Um, I actually look at them and watch them and think, wow, they have some really beautiful lines and movements and, and you know, Wong, I think, you know, is a really lovely skater and really just appreciate it. But I wanted to talk to you. We've gotten asked about this program before and haven't gotten to because of all the time. And this was the perfect time to talk about the British team doing Donna Summer, um, Fear and Gibbon. Jonathan, I... I loved it. It was a hot... Dave, I was so... Okay, you were like, okay, I need to know your thoughts on the British team. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I I hope he... I don't know why he wants to know because I randomly really loved it. And I love the way he moves. Yeah. Not in a creepy way. Like, he he had great angles with his body when he's sliding and, like, leans back against and she's against him. There are incredible moments. The music is fun and up amidst all this angsty, inish kind of melodramatic stuff. I was here for it. And now, if they now, mm-hmm. hello, I hope they go back to the drawing board with the rhythm dance because yeah. cause it's clear this is gaining momentum. This free, but it can only go so far if you're if you're not going to deliver the right rhythm dance. And the rhythm dance, actually, there's no reason you can't capitalize on this kind of energy they have mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and insert more of it there. It's interesting. Um, one, she needs to fix her leg and that position on, on the pair spin. It was just offensive to me. But um, thinking <laughs> about it. I have to say that I was talking to Sandra about this, and it's interesting how sometimes Donna Summer, that music, somehow it could be old but feel fresh, and yet somehow Brick ah. in the Wall feels dated for Kirsten and Michael. It's just weird with music and the timing. To me, the Celine Dion shorts, like, yes, I enjoy it for Mariah, and for, but it but feels a little dated, too, to me. Like it doesn't The Donna Summer, her. though, they're, they're up pieces. They're yeah. celebration pieces. They're party pieces, if you will. Mm-hmm. And that's harder to go out of style. It's those ballads. It's mm-hmm. anything kind of romantic-y and schmaltzy that becomes dated much more quickly. Mm-hmm. So these kinds of fun party pieces, come on. Like, if they could still, like, put a beat under it and throw it on at a club today in 2018, no one would care. Mm-hmm. But if they put on those other things, everyone would be like, what, well, what is this, easy listening? You know yeah. what I mean? So in a way, it is more current. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also bringing back, uh, you know, Tiffany and Jonathan uh, from Russia, Zahorsky Guerrero. I really, I, I like this um I like the uh, program, the Blues for Clue, but it doesn't build. And I think, especially during the step uh, sequence in the second half of the program, I was like, okay, this needs to be building. This needs to have more energy, more speed, more oomph. Like, it needs to create a bigger impact. And then the ending just kind of falls, and they kind of go into each other's arms, but it doesn't doesn't have an ending to it. It doesn't have, a, like, it has a beginning, but it doesn't have a middle or an end. <laughs> and I'm like... And it, he he was just unraveled. Yeah. I, I mean, there was like a spiral from start was a, to finish yeah. on that. And just in general, and um, it, it, I got the concept of what they were going for. And I, you could see, okay, I see how this is a thing, mm-hmm. but maybe not in this iteration. And a lot of it, even like the hand movements, mm-hmm. weren't deliberate. It, it would if he was going to put a hand here, he'd kind of then move it a little bit. Maybe wanted it here, maybe kind of wanted it here, and it was like just pick a place and do it. Mm-hmm. Like everything just seemed a little cluttered, a little clumsy to me. But I like I like them, and I think that um, you know I like her Eva, I think you know the Alexi of a camp. They do have a lot of good technique, but it doesn't always. They, it's like. They don't finish throwing the football all the way down. Like you were talking about, finish your antibiotics. Like finish the program, finish the idea, carry it through. Like the program right. needs to build, you know, it's not just the theme and the music. It needs to be constructed in a way that's getting bigger and bigger and more powerful and taking yeah. us on a journey. And that kind of a program, it's like it's, it draws your attention in, but it needs to sustain it and grow it. And I think right. the idea needs to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that program could be tweaked a little bit. Uh, another idea and work and look talk about dead end partnerships the parsons look they did get a bronze medal this may be one of the only grand prix medals they get he is a great skater they're completely mismatched to the point that it is so distracting when you watch them like she looks taller than him at certain points in the program i mean yeah i get it like at a certain point you just what's going on in this maryland camp i do not understand jonathan like well, and this is also what I was talking about, like some people who are only going to look at medals, mm-hmm. like some people who 
who there and there are a lot in skating mm -hmm. that will be like Alexa and Chris won a bronze. They're on track. They're going to be amazing this season. And you're like, well, hold on. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at it. And, and you know, same thing with this bronze medal. Um, you know, the the bronze medal of Matteo Rizzo is very different than the bronze medal of Elisabetta. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it, it, it just. And they were so far behind. And again, it was really because the Brits bombed the rhythm dance. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were second in the um, free. in the free. And it was the, the judges, you know, when you look at all those protocols, they were just kind of all over mm -hmm. um, with knowing what to do with that American team, because it's like, I guess you could be third or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's tricky. Yeah, he could, I think with a... a a good partner he could you know really move forward in the sport he's very know? talented yeah but then all of a sudden like you were talking about danny like having to like make adjustments to his side-by-side -side jumps because of his partner or mm -hmm. whatever or maybe caitlin in my opinion for many mm -hmm. years had problems with uh, this is all made up on mm -hmm. my own observation that jean-luc was so advanced mm -hmm. that it, it seems i'm sure it must have been difficult to live in the shadow of someone who was so technically beyond mm -hmm. um and, and i don't know if that's happening here or not but mm -hmm. um it's just a weird situation but he's he's quite talented yeah um but let's talk about the ladies because that was really uh the, the highlight of the event um i want to give a shout out to uh mariah carey mariah bell as the Brits <laughs> were calling her um she really stepped it up. It was interesting that Raphael wasn't here. Um, I don't know if what he was doing. I know he doesn't love to travel, but he, you know, she really delivered here um, in the free skate. She really, really did her job. Um, perhaps they will make uh, the content more technically difficult, but she has gotten her consistency yeah, technically there was no triple triple but yeah. i mean she she this was a big get for her this was a big get it was a good score it was a good performance it was the kind of stuff she needs to keep doing um make it to worlds this year be in the top two in the u.s and go for it and if brady makes any mistakes capitalize that's kind of what i would do go for your look get the consistency and really make a move um but yeah. i thought that she did a good you know a really good free skate here i it's a nice it's not to me the best free skate she's ever done but it's a nice look it's a nice it fits it's it's good it's it's and pleasant. i appreciate her spinning also yeah. like as, as she was spinning and changed position she would increase speed on occasion and i thought like wow there's there really is depth to her quality you mm -hmm. know i don't necessarily think it's like top notch but i mean mm -hmm. there is depth and real quality for her to be in the mix a couple of times and her choreographic sequence like mm -hmm. when you see someone come alive like that it's it's infectious it's intoxicating as an audience member it totally mm -hmm. makes me want to give you all the extra pcs and goe and all those sorts of things like yeah. we were saying the short program, not as much. Um, not as much, the short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Angela Wang and Courtney Hicks, more of the same from them. Not a surprise uh, in right. either case. Oh, shout out to Alex Johnson, by the way. Loved his first Grand Prix. He was actually expecting to be done, so he really wasn't training over the summer. So, But I have to say, I love his costume. I think it's the greatest. Um, He's always had really elegant choices, and it's just I always want a nice one. his outfit, and I want his hair. I don't have hair that... Is blows in the wind and it looks so soft and well okay. conditioned and I really just approve of it. Um, and I think my boyfriend really enjoyed. Um, what did you call Zach? His pelvic floor that part yeah, of the area. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> he enjoyed his ass. Okay. Oh, anyway. Oh, okay. That's different than pelvic floor. Just so you know. Just that's yeah. Different. Okay, Jonathan. Whatever. Poliforma is something about it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> But let's talk about um, uh, other ladies. How about my Ensu? Showed up here. I Beautiful. Oh, did I pick the right one? Okay, girl. <laughs> after Marin, after Marin let us down, we By will the way, always have Ensu. If unsuit. anyone is stress eating this weekend, it has to be Marin. Honda after Rika. Yeah. But we'll get an, oh, poor Marin. I mean, I know. and her siblings are doing so well uh, in Japan, making it to the Junior Nationals, both Miu and Sara. But, oh dear, this... But Yun Ensu was just amazing. Just it's beautiful. 
a short program, beautiful, beautiful I would have had her in third, and I wonder if anyone agrees. I thought that she was getting the you're new and not from Japan points. That's what I wondered. That's because yeah. really, especially the short, I think is just so beautiful. And mm. um, she she got like decent marks, but it did seem like welcome. Welcome well, she's to the new, senior. and she also was fifth at the last two uh, junior worlds and didn't make the last two Grand Prix, junior Grand Prix finals. So she doesn't have that same cachet. You know, we but enjoy this should, her. This should pick up immediately, I think, for her. Yeah. The, um, interesting that they, she looked like she thought on the spot she usually opens her free skate with the triple let's triple toe. So she tried to put it in the second half and it was under rotated. But it looked like she left it out on the first jump and it didn't look planned to do it in the second. I would go back making sure that she does that um, next week, the triple let's triple toe at the beginning. But the other thing I... The, the sow cow is just, you know, we you know we talked to her about, you know, she's working on it. She's not comfortable with it, but it is the scariest, most tilted thing. Um, I wonder if she should do it from an oiler. I was wondering if other people think that that would straighten it out. Um, I was asking different people what they thought because it's just not comfortable for her. They need to come up with something to make that jump happen. And she does need the jump, especially if she doesn't have like a triple axle or a quad. She needs those points. So I'm wondering if she needs to do like a double axle oiler triple sow or do it from there just to straighten out the technique. A lot of times when people struggle on sow, the entrance is really uncomfortable and they don't feel like it, getting up into it. So I'm wondering if that would help, doing different kind of things to see it. Because it, it's, you can tell she's uncomfortable with it and nervous about it, so. You think she's got Ulrich's face on a dartboard at her house? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for inventing that stupid job. <laughs> And okay. Sue and Christy Yamaguchi, yes, and they both have that's that That's right, of, that's right. Except yeah. except Rudy's throwing her into the... Yes. <laughs> she did have a good throw, throw uh, triple cell, Cal. But and Deanna right. said that that really could have thrown off her triple cell. I asked her about that. You wanna, and once. she's like, no, it's a thing. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, all right. so, yeah, uh, let's discuss, you know, Elisabetta, the lady of the hour. Uh-huh. You know, her Twitter is so genius that she's doing this because it's getting everyone behind her. Phil Hirsch was talking about her being ripped off in components. I mean... Unacceptable. Okay, and while we're on it, and I, this is just a, a, a thing, and you know I love Eurosport, but really I'm loving Chris and I love Mark. What's the name of this other guy? Simon. The Terry Ginn. Ugh. He was driving me... He's more the layman, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was driving me more bonkers this weekend than I ever imagined. Last week... He said to Mark Hanready, who I think like mm -hmm. did a spit take when he was like, well, I think Sakamoto is even more elegant than Satoko. Mm -hmm. And and Mark was like, oh, huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then this week he was saying he thought Verona should have been ahead of Shoma in the short. And he was he said the Mariah Carey instead of Mariah Bell, which was an amazing moment. Um, but where was I going with it? Oh, and then he also said the thing about Rika. Mm -hmm. Where he was like, never before has a woman landed two triple axles in a program, which of course is obviously the most wrong. Hello, Mao Asada in 2010. Mm -hmm. and drove, yeah. I mean, so in any case, the um, I, mean, I stopped watching Eurosport for it oh. because it was too tough. But, but Elizabeth, the, uh, we were talking about how Phil Hirsch um, was like, she's robbed in the short. He started going off on one of his Phil Hirsch things, but I was like... Yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy. Well, he her, said he, he said he felt like the judges didn't understand how she was responding to Tempe and stuff like that. And I was like, uh, sometimes I, I feel like you and Phil Hurst just like to use the word Tempe to let you know that like to let us know that you know it. Okay, let me. This, oh, kidding. versus what? 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 What else would you say? I'm saying that sometimes it can come off a little elitist when Phil tweets these things. It oh, can oh, because I was like. Should he say tempos? No. Like plural Jonathan, like when he talked oh. about Sasha Cohen's short and what she was doing with like the the short. And I see. You mean the concept in general? Yeah. In I general, got, is I like a little okay. 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 All right. Because I was like, if you're talking about fast music being followed with fast skating and slow music being no. followed by slow skating, that's like that's like pretty basic. No. Okay. I think people I'm get just... that. <laughs> Okay, I gotcha. He I can gotcha, speak Dave. to his audience a little bit. Okay, okay. It, it could just coming come... in loud and queer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So um, uh, I just I um, I, gotcha. I don't know. I just felt, but then he was really into Rika in the short. It just seems 
Look, I think it's genius, her tweeting. She knows how to capitalize on a post-Olympic season like Miki Ando, where I think it's going to be a very successful season and some gold medals coming her way. Right. And she is stepping through that open door uh, in a way where, it, like in a Megan Duhamel, I'm going to win the Worlds after the Olympics kind of way. It's that, you know, maybe she wouldn't be winning every other year, but this year she is primed and peaked for the right time. And it's interesting to watch, you know, not her absolute best free skate when compared to the other ladies but she's putting those triple axles out there she's becoming more consistent beautiful lots yeah. she's doing some some neat things the the thing is like sometimes when certain people will be like they just gotta believe or something like that it's such an eye roll to me as an observer because i was like no obviously there was a technical issue why don't you tell us what it is like mm -hmm. and but with elizabetta it really i think is as much a mindset thing as anything. And she like somehow willed this season to be a positive experience. And wouldn't you know, she is like boom, 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 because again, it comes down to that self-belief. Boom, 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 boom. I wanna go boom, boom. <laughs> so does Elisabetta, okay? <laughs> With Elisabetta, I think Elisabetta does boom, boom, which is why she has like a whole different kind of energy to her skating. And her I, makeup is top notch this year. So is, yeah. I, was I, I like it. And you know, they're very smart. By the time she gets to the, um, the, the end of the three, mm -hmm. there's that huge music shift that mm -hmm. reinvigorates and like brings in all that energy. And then she kind of wakes up in a way, and she, that's when I think she's at her finest, mm -hmm. is when she's just selling. She I think she has more more baby Plushenko in her than we think. <laughs> she, she has it. But yeah. baby Plushenko is now touring, by the way, and Nutcracker on Ice with Yulia and uh, Sotnikova. And baby... I think Gabby Daleman was put in front of, uh, put in charge of imaging. Oh. Because it looked very heavily edited. So. It did, didn't it? I didn't know where you were going with that, and I just got very yeah. nervous. You should be. <laughs> don't bring up Gabby Dillman. Um, okay, okay. Okay. I don't want to okay. get any hate mail. Um, it's a trigger. Anyway, it's a trigger. It's a trigger. Um, but, and does Sasha Plushenko really play violin? He's like a child model and a child skating star. And he does again, he's programs and he's doing shows. And I mean, the, psych, the, the therapy bills later on will be this fascinating, but I'm, I'm watching it. You know, hey, yeah. own yeah. it. Make it yeah. while you can. Um, <laughs> look, it looks fun. He's going to, be an interesting personality to watch but i'm f fascinated by in his bedroom he's got like cool stuff in there like baby plushenko's instagram is like really interesting jonathan he gets like more views than we could ever hope okay he's got like a fan base like you don't even know okay oh my god you don't okay. even get it okay <laughs> no don't act like i'm a creeper you have to watch this i mean clearly the kid is not instagramming himself obviously the mother could you is. imagine yeah okay <laughs> And okay. it's a product, but who cares? It is so yeah. hysterical. You're here for it. I'm here okay, for it. I'll check I'm fascinated. It. I'll check it out. All right. Um, anyway, moving on to uh, Satoko. Uh, let's. I think that the short is so brilliant. Uh, she had a new dress. I thought it looked really nice. With the mm. all white background in Japan, it looks slightly maybe washed out with the ivory, but I think it was just so. She is so stunning. I respond. I actually to like the way they like the rink there, though. It's it's mm. a bit different, eh? Yeah. Like it's a bit like super bright and has a nice feeling. They're not blaring techno music when everyone's scores are red. Like it's and I just was like, wow. I mean, not that I'd ever be able to like sneak in a ticket, but I was like, it would be amazing to experience a skating event in Japan. Yeah. They just seem to like do it right. It's class yeah. all the way. It's it's a classy experience and less like a basketball game, which is nationals. You got like idiot MCs like harassing old ladies and like weird pop singers from local venues and techno music and this was just so civilized like I would love to experience skating. It's just way. they just let skating be the star. They don't have all the cheese. It doesn't look like mm -hmm. maybe there's stuff we don't know about, but I didn't feel the rusty factor and there was no John They don't McCready apologize. Again. They yeah. don't apologize for the skating. They just let yeah. the skating be the star of the event and I think that's nice. Mm -hmm. Um and it, it looks it looked just really just Incredible. She was a, it, it was incredible. And now, when we were talking about the short before, mm -hmm. this, this I loved this short because I can't not love things that she does. And I felt like, especially in the beginning of the season, you were more taken with this program than I was. So I, yeah. I was looking closely again. And sure enough, by the time she ended that short program, I was in like a puddle. I was a mess. I was like, this is amazing. This is exquisite. Where have you been, Jonathan? I told you, you know that what, this was good. You know, okay. where I'm, you know where I'm stuck? Where? I'm stuck in the first couple seconds. 
And in the first couple seconds, and it's a total artistic choice and I just had to readjust. She's not, she's skating to an idea of the music in the very beginning, not the actual music. Like there's big, open, expansive music, mm -hmm. which I would think calls for big, open, beautiful skating. And she's, she has filled it with many details and small nuances mm -hmm. and things like that. And at first it just confused me because I was like, you're, you're, you're dancing to music mm -hmm. that isn't there and I'm not quite understanding what's happening here. It comes alive I, after like the second element. So she does the combo yes. into the into the camel, but it, it comes out in the transitions, all of a sudden it really... The, yeah. And then I am 100% in. And by the time the double axle hit and like mm -hmm. all these other moments, I was like, it's incredible. And her it, combo just, has gotten much better. I mean, she's never going to be the biggest yes. jumper, but the way she lands it, that technique is really... But the edges, mm -hmm. as she's landing on those blades, like it is, she is clearly like, I want to show you. I'm on the back outside blade, edge. And then my great, my done. blade is where it's supposed to be, damn Vincent it. Vincent yeah. needs to do that. Vincent Zo. But I think Mia yeah. Hamada would maybe make mincemeat of him. But uh, I do think that that would be um, really helpful. Um, I, okay, so I think that the dress and the free... I don't even know how to say this. Uh, go back to the dress from Skate America. I just... You know what? Just... Or like... Go back. It's too severe and it's it's startling. I think the dress, like with the cutout and the no fake flesh, and like you're literally looking at a skater's ribs, and like to me, it's uh, no. I just, other people yeah, love it. Yeah, you know what it was? I wrote it was more it was more skating. -y. It was mm. more traditionally a skating outfit in a bad way. I loved the the asymmetry of the sleeve. It made it unique, it made her long, it let me watch her arm in a different way, which is so beautiful. That picture you put up of where she's got the arm up and the leg behind her, and you're like, look, there is literally yeah. not one thing you would change. Um, mm -hmm. And it was accentuated by that sleeve. And it was it, more it was in the, character, and it was more about the tango, and I know some, not everyone loved it, but... You know what, I don't want to go into why I think that she should change the dress, but I think that she should change the dress. Yeah, and it, it, I, it yeah. was beautiful. I think the other one was the way to go. And oh my gosh, the entrance she does to that double axle right at the end of the program, those like the two backwards leap things, mm -hmm. I was just like, that was my moment when it like washes over you and you're like, oh my gosh. Like I literally, I was on a couch and like turned to no one. And mm -hmm. I was like, are you seeing this? Like this is ridiculously beautiful and amazing. And you I could know. tell me Hamada was a little nervous that Satoko wasn't gonna win, Satoko wasn't gonna win after uh, After Rika. she didn't win? <laughs> well, no, well, after oh, okay. Rika's performance, it was written all over her face and some people wrote about it in the comments where it's kind of that a Terry look when you're like, oh my God, what did I just... Like, not that they're not happy for the skater, but they know that they've just created a huge problem in the rink for themselves because the, they literally just watched the younger skater out skate and supplant the veteran skater. And it happened here and you, you can't stop it at certain points. And it just happened and... But yet what this means, because mm -hmm. it's in this, I don't know, I don't view it as threatening to the future of skating like I may have viewed other mm -hmm. moments. <laughs> it, was, it was a beautiful celebration of a particular rink that I know may have some harsh qualities in mm -hmm. reputation, but generates things that I think are so important to the ideology of what skating mm -hmm. is supposed to be. Yeah. So and it was wonderful. It was really just, look, yeah. she has, look, she, Rika is not the emotional overall. Um, and she's not supposed to be yet. Have the same level of detail and nuance that Satoko does. But I really think that she has such nice qualities all around. The spins, the edges, the footwork, the jump. It all came together. And, you know, what a wonderful moment for her. Not really into the costume, but the program is great. Uh, that Tom Dixon did. That free skate is really so effective. And it was I, such... It, it, and it, was, it did just what it was supposed to do because it was beautiful and it was giving you edge quality and it was, she was given time to do things and yet you see as she does them, she's getting close. She mm -hmm. doesn't fully extend and hold out a moment, but you know those are the things that are being worked on and that will come. This program was like the perfect mm -hmm. vehicle, I thought. And all of the jump entrances were so enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. She just skims on the ice and she's flying and there's an effervescent quality to it. And you didn't worry about the jumps. They were mm -hmm. exciting jumps that had speed, height, and confidence to it, packaged within mm -hmm. um, a, a medium that that was 
pursuing grace and elegance, not and the, ignoring it. And the patterns um, and the transitions are intricate, interesting, and different. So they were very creative, and I think that really added to it as well. I really appreciated it. So it was quite uh, the finish, the event. But it also, we do want to touch on the, the Russian, I guess, sectionals, you would call the internal Cup of Russia, not to be confused with Cup of Russia, as it was called the international event for years. That's right. Uh, we did see uh, Ateri's three skaters of the future, uh, Sherbakova, uh, Kostunaya, and Trusova uh, yeah. skate. And what did you make of their performances? We saw two quad lots, triple toes. So we saw Trusova and as well as um, uh, Sherbakova. So what did you make of them? And Sherbakova is the one who, when she took a fall, mm. right on the, I think on a second, was she doing a second quad lots? Yeah, Gosh, they both fell on the second quad lots. And it's, you know, at the end of the arena, sometimes they have those openings mm -hmm. and for like for the Zamboni and both of the gates were open mm -hmm. and I thought she was going to slide right out of the arena. Yeah. Like you literally saw her like sliding back backstage. Mm -hmm. You were like, wait, 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 come back on. <laughs> it yeah. was a Midori Ito moment. It was, but oh my gosh, the skating of these three. And, um, and of course, you know, Costa and I is my girl. Mm -hmm. I, I love what she's doing. I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to see it um, slip away. Mm. Sometimes I'm starting to see some of those elements get glossed over. Some mm. of the gestures, uh, I see some of the clutter impeding what I know she can probably do. Which mm. is, let's see what happens. It makes me nervous, maybe for what's coming up. But uh, for right now, I still very much enjoy watching her. Um, for, for me, the most. Shervakova, mm -hmm. who I know you love, is also very musical and nice. Trusova yeah. actually is not unmusical, but she, she is indeed, the I would say, the least artistic of the three. And they don't my... push it with her, especially in the free skate. Yeah. There's a vacant, like she's in the program in the beginning, and then once she starts jumping, it's just a jumping exercise. Um, right. It looks like they push these girls so hard, so fast, and you wonder about their bodies lasting. Not only just, like aging and going through maturity but you're talking about like the injuries and it looks like they can do one quad lots two is really pushing it for these young right. girls they're doing quad lots triple toe like maybe back off a little bit and let's try to save you know how many would we like to compete next year uh in right. two years um and maybe that's not the biggest uh thing in the rink i think kostunaya may be the one who wins the race if she keeps just doing what she can and cleaning it she up. She had that she had that incredible triple axle with the mm -hmm. entrance that was just mind yeah. blowing over the summer. But yeah, she does seem to be the safest as far mm -hmm. as um they're not gonna push her beyond mm -hmm. it seems at the moment. Um and again because if you did you, you don't know what you have. Yeah. You know? And um They don't so push I, the I'm, skating skills to me, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, I think Kostranaya and Sherbakova do have, you know, very nice they skating skill qualities, yeah. but mm -hmm. they're not, they're not further developing them. And that's what's disappointing. But yeah, I think overall, the, 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 it's limitless potential in yeah. the artistry of those two. You don't yeah. see the emphasis necessarily on the programs. And that's, you know, where you see it with Rika, where they're really pushing her to be the all around complete exactly. senior skater or Ensu. And you see Ensu's jumping with the legs. Watch Ensu's jumps versus the way that Trusova jumps or the way, um, you know, Shervakova jumps and you can just see who has the more long-term potential. You know, look at how much uh, Tuktimisheva jumps with her legs. So I think that that was interesting overall, but it was quite the week of surprises. I don't know. It was, I was a little disappointed when we heard that Cizeron was injured, but it wound up being a really great week. What was your moment of the week, Jonathan? I mean, the ladies event in general was just like epic. Like I, it was one great performance after another and after some other like kind of, you know, quirky moments throughout the competition, just the ladies event as a whole was awesome. And, yeah. and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but of course, you know me, I, I guess I'll go with Aliyev short because mm -hmm. that was his cleanest. But anytime to see him just emote is I'm there for it. Yeah, well, I enjoyed, I have to say the ladies event was really such a standout and, and, and a surprise, but 
I think we needed it. And it was great. And it was so uh, exciting. Yeah. And it, it really, this Grand Prix season is really delivering every week. It's been on point. It's been one of the best uh, Grand Prix, I think, that we've had in a long, long time. So I'm excited. We want to know what was your moment of the week? What upset is keeping you engaged? Let us know in the comments below. Hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys.